Hey, hey, what's up guys? Kai here, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI using No Magicite. In our last episode, in addition to learning about Edgar and Sabin's past, we also learned a lot about Locke's past, and why exactly he is so driven to protect Terra and Celeste. His heart is heavy, shouldering the burden of grief, and while I feel for the guy, we do have more important matters on our hands, such as finding Terra. Hey, get out of my way! Move! So since last time, I did make my way back to the Veldt because I wanted to pick up two more Rages for Gaw, and this will be the last return trip that we make for quite some time. I have all the Rages that I think are useful because the rest are about as useful as the letter G in the word lasagna. So real quick here, let me show you which two I picked up. There we go. I wanted to get the Angle Form Rage that allows Gaw to use the Aqua Breath attack, or Aqua Rake as it's known as in this game. It's a water elemental attack that uh, deals damage to all enemies on the screen. And I think that's useful because water elemental attacks are few and far between in this game. Only a handful of characters get access to them. And the other rage is the Aspic Rage that allows Gaul to use the Gigavolt attack, which is essentially the level 3 elemental spell. Yeah, that's an endgame level spell, and Gaul has access to it already. Talk about OP and broken. So anyways, in order to get back to Narsh, we just take the boat here, back to South Figaro. Wait a minute, the Empire's still occupying South Figaro. Whatever shall we do? Well, got a little treat for you today, guys. We have a little cutscene coming up here, and this is something that I didn't know about until just a few years ago, and it's one of the amazing things about this game is that it's just chock full and packed to the gills with little secrets and cutscenes and easter eggs and things like that and i've been playing this game for close to 20 years and i'm still learning new stuff it's one reason why i like tri ace games so much is because there are so many little things and details in their games and, and this is back in 1994 i don't know how Squaresoft managed to pack all of this onto one cartridge, but they did. I mean, this game is huge. So how are we going to... Really, game? <laughs> hey -o! Yeah, I like how we just smuggle ourselves out of town by cramming our whole party into a treasure box, but hey, it works. So now I will just meet you back at Narsh. Alright guys, made it back to Narsh, and along the way, Edgar gained a level. Real quick here, let me show you the setup I'm going to be using for the upcoming part in the game. This is my final party. Celeste and Edgar, I think, are mandatory. Um, Celeste for her healing magic, and Edgar for his tools. And your other two party members are completely up to you, it's personal preference. I like to bring Sabin and Gaul because, just like Edgar, they can deal really good single target damage and really good AoE damage. And both of those are going to be important for the areas that we'll be visiting. Looking at my equipment, I have green berets all around, and I have mithril shields all around. And you can buy mithril shields here in Narsh. For accessories, I have magic boosting equipment on everybody except Celeste. Um, oddly enough, Edgar, Sabin, and Gaw, all, all of their AoE damage bases their damage off of their magic stat, because they're all magic-based attacks. So boosting that will be really good. And for Celeste, I gave her the sprint shoes just because, and the Atlas armlet because I will actually be using her physical attack. You'll notice that she has a flail equipped, and you can buy that here in Narsh as well. And that deals the same damage in the back row as it does in the front row, so that'll give her something to do. But anyways, let's have a look around town, now that we have free reign to do so. Let's come over here first. 5,000 gold, awesome. Ooh, another pair of earrings. 
Let's give those to Sabin, so now everyone has at least one. If only I could buy those at a shop. Here we get a thief knife, which would be pretty good for Locke if you wanted to bring him along. Wall ring gives you auto reflex, that'll come in handy later, so definitely hang on to that. And last but not least, we get a sneak ring. Pretty good loot over here, actually. Um, the sneak ring is equipable only by Locke at this point in the game, and it raises the successful rate at which he can steal. The thief knife is also pretty cool. By the way, here's the armor shop where you can buy the mithril shields. Because if you equip a character with a thief knife and attack, you'll randomly attempt to steal from an enemy, which is kind of cool. Here's the weapon shop if you want to purchase that flail for Celeste. And way over here is the Elder's House, our last stop in Narsh. Pick up an elixir, alright. I think last time I LP'd the game I brought Cyan, but um, unfortunately this time around he is not all that great. <laughs> but um, I'll try to get him some more screen time before he becomes totally obsolete. If he's not already obsolete, that is. Alright, so if you didn't watch the last episode because you weren't interested in story bits, then we need to go to Figaro Castle in order to make it to Kolingen. So I will just meet you there. Alright guys, remember there was that one guy that told us, hey, if you want to get to Kolingen, well, South Figaro can get you there. So all you gotta do is come talk to this old guy, and you will get shuttled across. If you didn't watch the last episode again, then you'll want to purchase the drill and flash tools here from the merchant for Edgar, because those are really, really good. What the drill does is it's a single target physical damaging tool, but it also bypasses an enemy's defense. That'll come in handy in the very near future. And the flash deals non-elemental magic damage to all enemies. It is really good. It's one of the reasons why I bring Edgar along because he can play both roles you know, on a whim and on your command. It's not random like, say, Gaw. Um, you know what? Yeah, let's go up here first. Show off some of these new abilities that we have. Alright, enemies, red fangs, new enemies, I should say. Alright, Gaw, let's put the Aspic Rage to use. Yeah, not bad, not bad. 500 damage split between two monsters with only one pair of earrings. Yeah, really good damage. Those guys aren't even weak to lightning either. Alright, Vultures. We met up with them in the last episode, but in case you didn't watch that, uh, they are weak to wind. So let's see if we can get Marshall to do the job. Nice. Yeah, go Gaw, you are so overpowered. <laughs> he is going to be immensely useful in this LP. What's going on over here? Hey. Uh, some people just want to watch the world burn. Ooh, a Coliseum. Huh, well, we'll have to come back and check in on him later. But here we get a hero ring. This is probably my favorite accessory in the game, or it's damn near close. Let's give that to Edgar. What it does is it raises physical and magical damage by 25%. It's basically an atlas armlet and an earrings combined into one accessory. It is very good. And Edgar is a very good candidate for that because he has both physical and magical attacks. Even better is that the 25% magic damage bonus, it stacks with the earrings. So now Edgar can deal an extra 50% damage with Flash, and an extra 25% damage with everything else. So let's see uh, the Flash tool in action. If we can ever get to his turn, that is. Not bad, not bad. 
Remember, Flash is non-elemental, so you never have to worry about enemies absorbing the damage or nullifying that damage. So, Edgar, yeah, he's, he's a force to be reckoned with right now. Hey! Terra is beautiful, I agree. South towards the town of Jador, alright. Looks like that's going to be our next destination. Sequined Dress. It's a fancy word game. Apparently there's an opera house down south as well. Poor Locke. Wait, we don't want to buy anything here. What am I doing? Child of Light? No, that was something else. It's a good game, by the way, viewers. Oh yeah, we kind of talked to him already. Oh, I know that music. Hey, hey, Shadow. Now, if you come here with only three party members, you have the opportunity to hire Shadow for 3,000 gold and he'll join your party. However, I don't think it's worth it at all because he again retains that stupid trait of randomly leaving your party after battle. That's not how you spell assassin, Ted Woolsey. That's also not how you spell assassin. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, totally not worth it. Although it's something you could consider if you really like Shadow. Another thing you could do is come here with a party of just Gaw, hire Shadow, then go back to the Velt and leap onto a monster, and then before Gaw returns to your party, jump down to the Serpent Trench, go back to Nikea, make your way all the way back to Narsh with only Shadow in your party. And what that does is it gives you a secret Green Beret here. Yeah, easy to miss that. And what happens when you get to Narsh is Shadow will automatically leave your party. However, because he's the only one in the party, you then have no active party. So what happens? Well, the game glitches out and gets really screwed up. <laughs> I don't recommend doing it, but it's there. That's Locke's what? Kind of looks like Rachel. Yeah, that is Rachel. If you come here with Locke and talk to this guy, he tells you that he's keeping her alive or whatever using suspended animation herbs. Yeah, she's basically in a cryogenic state being preserved. But uh, we'll learn more about that. Well, I don't know. Are we going to learn more about that? I mean, she's kind of dead, and if a phoenix down doesn't work, what else are you going to do? Alright, let's use Shadow's new Blitz that we picked up. At level 15, he learns the Fire Dance Blitz. Deals fire elemental damage, that's magic based, to all enemies. So, there you go. And I'll show you the input command for that, it's kind of crazy actually. Yeah, it's a half circle back to forwards. Wasn't that the same animation for reuse uh, Flame Hadouken in Super Street Fighter? Might have been. Man, this party is so powerful. I'm dealing so much damage right now. It's one of the reasons why I really like this part of the game is because everything is finally starting to come together. Ran into a new enemy there, the Hornets. They can put your party members to sleep, but if you just go with a good flash, you should be able to one-shot all of them. Aw, oh, come on, game. Really? Well, at least I could show them off to you. They're called the Mind Candies. Iron Fists are those brawlers down there, and you want to be careful with them. They have the stone ability. And if that hits your party members, who are on the same level as those guys, it'll deal over a thousand damage. And the reason is because of the way that ability works. If the caster is the same level as the target, then it multiplies the damage by like... 16 or 24, it's ridiculous. It's basically Goblin Punch from Final Fantasy V. Anyways, now that we're in Jador, we could get some new armor. 
get a white dress for Celeste. Ninja gear for Gaw, and a Mithril Vest for Edgar. Because Locke has the one I stole earlier, and I'm too lazy to go back to Narsh and get that for him. So yeah, a little better there. Much better there. Gotta love the speed boost. And gotta love the magic power boost. Plus five, that is gonna be really good for Celeste. In fact, status boosting equipment is gonna be paramount in this LP. Ah. Oh. I guess that's good to know. Oh, I'm thinking of another town. Here's a chocobo stable. You could rent a chocobo if you want. Let's see here. Uh, Kaiser Knuckles. These are actually pretty good for Sabin because they are wholly elemental. I'm going to get two of those for much later. These edges and skeins right here are for Shadow. Um, and basically they allow him to hit all enemies on the screen for the corresponding elemental damage. Fire, water, lightning. They're really good. But we don't have shadow right now, so... Oh well. So, wait a minute. This is a town of rich people. And just across the way you have a town of poor people and thieves. And liars. What is this? Aurea and Bleak from Breath of Fire? Yeah, pretty much. Alright, now that we're all healed up, we are ready to go for the next episode. Yeah, I'm gonna call it quits after we explore this town, viewers. But looks like we're on the right track, alright. Hmm, reminds me of another game. Anyways. Yeah, now we can finally buy the earrings. And I highly recommend getting... Let's see here. Gives me a total of six. You know what, let's get a total of eight. Yeah, that should be good. And if you don't have the money because you didn't go back to the belt, then don't worry about it. It's not critical. But you do want to keep in mind that this is where you can buy earrings for later in the game when you do have the money. And they are, like I said, they are one of the best accessories in the game because a vast majority of the attacks base their damage on magic. Which kind of makes sense, seeing as how the main focus of the game is magic. I wonder what's over here. Oh, it's an auction house. Okay, well, we'll have to come back here later. But yeah, now that everyone has two earrings, oh man, our damage is going to be through the roof. Huh. Nothing at the item shop that I care about, so let's just go up here. Owser's house. Ozer, Owser, whatever. Here we get a tincture. Awesome. Oh, evidently Celeste looks a lot, a lot like this Maria character. Okay, that's all we can do here. So now, what I want to do is rent a chocobo because I am not walking all the way to the door. Let's go this way. <laughs> and let's save our game here. You never know what could happen. In the town of Zozo, where it's raining? That's weird, it wasn't raining outside. Wow, this really is the town of Bleak. Anyways, uh, before we go any further in here, searching for Terra, I'm going to call it quits. And when we come back next time, we will do just that. Nice jazzy tune here, by the way. I like it. But yeah, thank you for watching, guys. As always, I hope you have a good day. Take care.